I'm hopefully going to be doing a Taylor Jenkins read project in the next month or so where I read all of her books and decide which one is best. The next two books are ones that I got for a project that I'm doing that I've told you about already and those are both by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And the next one is a Taylor Jenkins Reid book which is one of the final ones that I have to read for my Taylor Jenkins Reid project. That video should be coming out in the next couple of weeks in which I'm trying to decide which Taylor Jenkins Reid book is best as I read through that book. Doing my project, I'm going to be starting it this week and I'm so excited. In case you don't know already, the project is... I'm going to be reading all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, at least the ones that I haven't read already. And I'm going to be deciding which one is best. So I've decided to start with Maybe in Another Life because I've decided that's probably the one that I'm most excited for apart from rereading Daisy Jones. So this one, all I know about it is that it's about parallel universes. So I think the main character has to make some sort of choice. It alternates between the choices, choices that she makes. So I'm expecting it to be very good. That's a trope that I love. I'm very much looking forward to it. So I'm going to start it now. It's not a very long book. It's only... 300 pages long or so, so I should fly through it. I'll update you once I've started. It's just a quick update to say that I've been reading maybe in another life almost all day. I haven't stopped, so I'm currently 215 pages in, so I have this much to go. I'm really enjoying it actually. It's a lot better than the other book that I read by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I can't remember the name of it. That one I didn't really enjoy, and I thought this was going to be a similar feel, but with a trope I really enjoyed. But actually, the feel is a lot different. It's the main character is a lot more enjoyable. I love the friendship between the main character and her best friend. It's just lovely. I've got about 115 pages left to go, roughly, and I'm going to finish it in the next hour or so. And I will give you a full review of this one on all the books at the end of the video. I don't really want to go into too much detail here, but I'm very, very pleased that I'm enjoying this one a lot more than I enjoyed the other one. Because I was a bit worried that I was only going to enjoy Taylor Jenkins Reid's historical fiction books like Seven Husbands and Daisy Jones and of course Malibu Rising but it looks like this one is going to be a hit with me as well. I think it does help that the book has my fav one of my favourite tropes in it which is parallel universes sliding doors type stuff. I think it's a really good story. I did want to point out that there are trigger warnings in here for car accidents. There's also a miscarriage induced by the car accident. I think it's quite important that people know that because it does, did kind of come out of the blue and I wasn't expecting it so it was all a bit sudden and I want people to be aware. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this book off now and then maybe start another one today. So I am back in the same spot. It is a different day I promise but I'm just doing more recording. This is good lighting. So I finished maybe in another life last night actually yesterday afternoon just after i spoke to you didn't take very long and i really really enjoyed it i'm going to give this one four stars i would say i didn't love it as much as i liked daisy jones obviously because i gave that five stars and i didn't love it as much as evelyn hugo so at the moment this is third of my preferred taylor jenkins reads books and the other one which i still can't remember forever interrupted that is still last so this is what the ranking looks like so far have the next one here i just need to reach for it so next i'm going to be reading one true loves because it's the other physical book that I have. I have the others as ebooks or audiobooks. So I'm going to give this one a go. This one is about a woman called Emma who is in her 20s. She married her high school sweetheart, Jessie. There's a character called Jessie in Maybe in Another Life, but he married a Jessica, I think. So I don't think they're related, but that would be quite cool if they were. It says, this is a breathtaking love story about a woman who is unexpectedly forced to choose between the husband she had long thought dead and the fiance who has finally brought her back to life. I think I've heard a lot about this one actually. I think they go on holiday and the husband dies or dies and then she moves on with someone else and then the husband mysteriously comes back. So this again sounds kind of tropey and I love the sound of it. It sounds like a trope that I would very much enjoy. I don't know where it's set, if it's set abroad or if it's set entirely in the US apart from the holiday where the husband goes missing but we are going to find out and I will let you know how I find it. So I have started One True Love so I keep forgetting the name of it but that's what it is. One second. And I'm just getting dinner ready or part of dinner ready. I'm only really chopping the carrots because Quill does the rest. But I thought this would be the perfect chance to tell you what I'm thinking so far. So I'm about 60 pages in, I would say, and I am very much enjoying it so far, although it hasn't really gotten going yet. I think I told you a synopsis at the beginning of this section of the vlog, but it's basically about a woman who's dead husband comes back to life just as she's about to marry another guy. At the moment it's just flashing back and letting us get to see how the main character got to know her first husband and kind of the build up to their wedding and her home life beforehand. So we're just getting to know the main character basically. It's a very very slow start. I am enjoying it but I wasn't expecting it to be so slow. I wasn't expecting the husband to show up 
like alive and then all of a sudden for it to switch to a constant flashback introducing this new husband. It's kind of vaguely introduced the new fiance but only because he was kind of in her childhood. They are just about to get married and they're about to go on their honeymoon. I can't remember if the husband is meant to have died on the honeymoon so maybe we're coming up to that point soon. I am very much enjoying it and I just wanted to give you that update. Also wanted to just mention that the main character is a essentially a travel blogger. She's a travel journalist. That career it just fascinates me. I would love to be a travel vlogger or blogger and get to travel around and write about it. So that's also very intriguing for me. So I am back in the kitchen again, just really quickly to give you a very quick update of where I'm at with One True Love. So I am 200 pages in, I've got this much to go. So about 100 pages, I think. I'm enjoying it. It's just, it's really stressing me out. So I don't, I don't know which guy is best for her or which one I want her to end up with. And it's making me quite emotional and sad and stressed and I need to calm down. So I took a couple of days off after finishing One True Loves because honestly it stressed me out so so much. I was getting so kind of distressed at the thought of having to choose one of these guys from here because although one of them was admittedly better for her than the other, one of them was still her husband who she thought was dead. So yeah, it kind of got to me. So I took a break and I had to stop, but now I'm feeling refreshed. So I'm going to read what am I reading after I do, which I don't know what it's about. Oh, by the way, so One True Loves, I think I enjoyed slightly less than maybe in another life. I still doubt anything is going to beat Daisy Jones and the Six, but if anything does, it's probably going to be Malibu Rising, I would say. So yeah, let's see what After I Do is about. Okay, it says here that Lauren and Ryan's marriage reaches the breaking point. They come up with an unconventional plan. They decide to take a year off in the hopes of finding a way to fall in love again. One year apart and only one rule, they cannot contact each other. So they're married and they have to go no contact for a year. And again, this sounds stressful, but I'm hoping to really enjoy it. I'm gonna go ahead and start it now and I'll get back to you. I'm back, it's a different day, and I've read about 25% of After I Do, so I thought I should give an update just before I started work. I am obviously not very presentable right now, but I'm sure you can forgive me. So, After I Do. I think I described it in my last clip. It's about a marriage couple who go on a year-long separation because they're not getting on very well, and that's pretty much all I know about it still because that's all that's happened so far. The couple were arguing like crazy and they just couldn't stand each other and seeing these two characters that I don't really care about because I don't really know much about them, but seeing them react to each other that way and to interact with each other that way from the start was actually quite stressful for me. I don't know what it is about Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, but they all seem to stress me out. So yeah, there's that. That's how I'm feeling about it so far. It's a very fast read. I'm going to finish it in the next couple of hours. Obviously I need to work first, but at lunchtime I'm probably going to finish the book. So I'm gonna go get ready, go make sure that I look okay for my meetings that I'm going to be in, and then I'll get back to you once I I've read a bit more of the book, if my feelings change at all, if not, I'll get back to you at the end. Just a really quick update, I've got about an hour left of the book after I do, so I'm probably going to finish it off this lunchtime, I've just done a workout and I have a bit more time left. I have to say, I'm not loving the book, it's alright so far, but there's really nothing stand out about it, and having read so many Taylor Jenkins Reid books now, I think she tends, at least in her earlier books, to follow a formula, and that's okay. That's fine because some people like that, some people enjoy reading books like that. I'm struggling with reading them all back to back, so that's why I've been taking breaks in between. So once I finish this one, I'm going to read the novella Evidence of the Affair, and then I'm going to finally get onto Malibu Rising because that's the only thing keeping me going right now. I'm so, so excited, so I'm going to get to that hopefully in the next few days, but I'm going to finish off after I do first, and I... We'll give you my final rating when, once I finished it, but I don't know if it'll be my final rating because I think I'll want to sit on it a bit longer first. I finished it. It's very bright right now outside considering it was just raining and I got cold so I'm now in my dressing gown and my gym kit. But I finished the book and I'm probably gonna give it three stars. It wasn't great. Now I'm go actually going to get straight into the evidence of the affair or evidence of an affair, whatever it's called. I'm gonna get straight into that because it's only short and I can definitely crack that out today and then I'm gonna take a very brief like two day break and then I'm gonna read Malibu Rising which I'm so excited for. So my situation is worse thing. I'm now in a blanket because I am freezing. I don't know why it's so cold today but it is in the middle of May. Just started evidence 
of the affair which seems to be told in letters i've only read three of the letters so far i don't know if this continues the entire way through but this is actually a really good kind of refreshment sort of format for me um considering i've been reading taylor jenkins reads books that are just told in prose with a couple of letters thrown in or emails so yeah i should be finished with this one in about an hour i'm going to carry on reading it now i'm hoping this is going to be a kind of palette cleanser before i dive into malibu rising and also fingers crossed this goes well I'm looking forward to reading this and i'll speak to you in a bit it's a day later and i'm on the floor after work i am about to start malibu rising i'm so excited the first line is malibu catches fire the second line is it is simply what malibu does from time to time and i cannot wait to carry on with this book so that's my update for now i'll be back in a bit once i've started the book good morning i stayed up way too late last night reading malibu rising i'm currently 30 percent of the way through and i am loving it this feels like a return to form for taylor jenkins read even though i know that she has been doing this for her past two books three books now it's it's really good. So very briefly, I need to clarify a couple of things for the synopsis because I don't think I've told you about it. It's set in Malibu. It's told in a couple of different timelines. So first of all, you've got these four siblings who live in Malibu and one of them called Nina is hosting a party and you know that something is going to go wrong at the party. Malibu is going to be set on fire. So it's focusing on them in one sort of timeline and then the second timeline is following their parents and how they got together met had their kids had affairs and shit and basically like lived a hollywood life so i am really really enjoying it so far i'm probably going to finish it today because it's just so captivating gripping I'm really excited to find out what happens at the party because everyone's talking about it and it starts off at 7 a.m in the morning so the party isn't going to be happening until later on in the evening and i'm currently at 10 am i think in the present day or present day is set in the 80s as well so it's not actually present day really enjoying it very gripping i love her writing style nowadays i love that she's doing these sort of historical hollywood books because i think it just works so well with her newish writing style i can't really explain it i'm going to have to think up some ways to properly describe how i feel about her change in style because i think it's fantastic i'm gonna read some more now just before work and then i'll get back to you later i'm up against the radiator because it's still freezing cold Cold here in the UK. I have finished reading all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books and I'm here to give you a wrap up and my final ranking. So I'm thinking I should probably move this over so I can put the graphic that I'm going to make up on here. So without further ado, here is my ranking of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books and which book I think is her best. So in spot number eight, the final spot, I'm going to put Forever Interrupted because I really didn't like that book. I gave it two stars back when I read it, I think last year. If you can hear scrambling, it's Bucky. She's feeling very hyperactive. Forever Interrupted was about a woman who married her husband very, very quickly. So quickly, in fact, that she didn't have a chance to meet her in-laws. No one really knew about her at all. And no one knew that they were married. So her husband then died very suddenly, almost as suddenly as they were married. And her in-laws wanted to handle everything because they didn't know that he had a wife. I really didn't like it. I didn't think it was very well written. This was her debut book, so I will cut her some slack. It wasn't a good book, in my opinion. I thought it was quite boring. I didn't feel connected to the characters. I really didn't care about the woman who lost her husband because he died so suddenly, and it was just as soon as we'd met them. So I, yeah, I didn't really care. So <laughs> then in space number seven, we have what I think is, or was Taylor Jenkins Reid's second book, and that is After I Do. So this one is about, it's another kind of marriage thing. The main character is a woman who isn't having the best time with her husband they're constantly arguing and they don't think they're in love anymore so they decide to take a break and go no contact for a full year it's just following her as she kind of rediscovers herself rediscovers her love for her husband or not it just really wasn't my kind of thing i don't think possibly because i'm not married although i don't think that's really got anything to do with it i think i had real trouble putting myself into her shoes because she had fallen out with her, out of love with her husband again i have problems relating to this character i do think that taylor jenkins reads writes very good sibling relationships and I'll get more into that in a bit. The main character's relationship with her sis siblings was very good in this one. So that was seventh place. In sixth place we have the novella Evidence of the Affair. This is technically a short story. I don't really know what the difference is. It's not very long at all. It's told entirely in letter format so the main character I think it's set in like the 60s, 70s or 80s before the internet. So the main character writes a letter to a man because the main character's husband is having an affair with the man's wife and she wants to let him know that's been going on and she knows about it and she feels like he should, he deserves to know because his wife is cheating on him. And there's a bunch of letters back and forth between the man and the woman. Also some letters going back and forth between the 
two people who are having the affair because those letters were also discovered. I quite liked it, it was good. I don't typically like short stories but I do like stuff written in letter format so that was really good, it was very appealing to me and also the ending was kind of like a bit of a thriller like gotcha ending which I really liked so that's why I preferred that one to the other two. Next we have One True Loves, this is in fifth place. I did enjoy this one but it stressed me out so it's about a woman whose husband dies in a helicopter crash and so she moves on and finds another person and she falls in love with him and they get engaged and then her husband comes back he comes back to life he's been stranded on an island this entire time he comes back and he thinks it's gonna be fine because they're gonna go back to how their lives were before they now they found each other again she's what kept him kind of going that entire time on the island. The main character just isn't sure if she's moved on or if she can just like revert back to how she was then. It stressed me out. <laughs> it was a very stressful book and that's the reason why I can't really rate it higher because I didn't enjoy my experience reading it. I did think it was a well-written book, it was so much better than her previous ones, but it stressed me out. I have nothing more to say about it, it was just so stressful. I didn't know which guy would be better for her, I didn't know what the main character should have done in that situation. It was very very difficult for me to read. Then in fourth place, we're getting better, we have Maybe In Another Life, which is a parallel universe sliding doors sort of thing. The main character gets into a, in one reality, gets into a car crash and her life goes one way, and in the other one she goes home with a guy, doesn't get into the car crash and her life goes another way. I really like parallel universe stuff and sliding doors types of things, even though I've never seen the film Sliding Doors. And so I really, really enjoyed this one. Again, it's very well written, Taylor Jenkins read writing ability, you can tell, or writing style has greatly improved since her first books and I felt a real connection to the main character so that was really really good. Now we're getting into the top three and I wanted to do this project to see if anything could ever beat Daisy Jones and the Six so without further ado in third place we have Malibu Rising which is her newest release it's coming out on the 1st of June I believe I can't remember if it's already out in the UK or not as you're watching this don't think it is I think it's coming out tomorrow. This is a really good book to start with. I could not stop reading it, it was so well written and well paced. It tells the story of these four siblings who are living in Malibu and their father is an absent father. So he's actually one of Evelyn Hugo's seven husbands. He's Mike Reaver who annulled the marriage with Evelyn Hugo after like 24 hours or something. He wasn't a very important or prominent husband but he was in Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I really appreciated. I like that it focused on his kids, not so much on him. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Like I said, it's really fast paced. I loved reading about the siblings. I also liked that she went into kind of historical detail about Mick, sorry, I think his name's Mick Reaver. Did I say Mike? I think it's Mick. It goes into detail about Mick and his wife, the children's mother, and how they met and how their lives were before, just before they met and uh, how their marriage was going so that you understand where the four children are coming from and why they are the way they are. And the main one is Nina, who's the oldest, and she's kind of the more parental figure in their lives because they don't really have parents anymore. Oh, it was so good. Nina is such a good character. I loved all four of the siblings, actually. I love their relationships, but Nina was definitely the standout. I didn't cry during this one, but it came very very close and I didn't love it as much as I loved the other two books but it was a very very good one and I can't wait to probably reread it. I'm thinking I might do a reread of the top three books of hers because I think they work really well together particularly because um, obviously Mick Reaver is one of the husbands and there were kind of references to some stuff in Evelyn Hugo and I can't remember if it mentioned anything about Daisy Jones but I will see once I reread. So in second place we have obviously Evelyn, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I really enjoyed this one as well. I loved the historical aspect again of following Evelyn Hugo throughout old Hollywood all the way up to present day and figuring out how she got to where she is. I think that's something that Taylor Jenkins Reid has been doing really really well in these three books. I think she's fantastic at incorporating old Hollywood storytelling and following people's whole journeys if that makes sense rather than just little snippets of their lives. I love it when she follows the whole life so we can see their journeys and how they ended up. So in first place we have Daisy Jones and the Six, it's my favourite book of hers, it's one of my favourite books of all time, it's my favourite audiobook I've ever listened to I think, it's absolutely fantastic and I think I might try to read it in physical format at some point because I think that will give me a fairer idea of how the book is to read, like with your eyes, but I do think that it's a book that's definitely meant to be consumed by listening if you can because it's the acting in the audiobook is incredible and it's the reason that I gave it five stars. So yeah, that's my ranking of Taylor Jenkins Reads books and which one I think 
think is best. I still think it's Daisy Jones. Nothing can beat that so far. I'm looking forward to seeing what she comes out with next. I think her Taylor Jenkins Reads writing style has greatly improved. She is becoming such a talented writer, I think. And it was really interesting to go back and see her back, read her backlist and see her kind of writing progression because I love stuff like that. I really enjoy going back and reading author's debut books if I've read and loved their previous ones, their newer stuff, I mean. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Let me know what your top three Taylor Jenkins Reads books are in the comments below. If you've only read one, then let me know. Let me know what you think your favourite is and we can get a discussion going in the comments. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll speak to you all in the next video. Bye!